Alright, hey, what's up guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. I'm going to do a video today on uh, doing an old-fashioned kind of defensive option drill that we've incorporated uh, with some of the issues that we've had with some of our younger kids um, on the JV level and then some of our younger varsity kids, some of the issues we've had with eye discipline on defense. So I've taken um, something from an old-fashioned drill that I learned 20, 25 years ago on how to defend the option, and I've incorporated some new uh, twists on that to help us um, in in the run game and, and help us get our eyes where they belong and take our eyes off of where they shouldn't be. All right, remember to check out some of our sponsors. We've got GameStrat, which is a sideline replay system we use. Uh, if you're looking for number one, most reliable, most affordable sideline replay system on the market, check out GameStrat. Great customer service, friendly people, uh, easy to work with. Check them out. All right, it's a sideline replay system we use. We love it. In the description box. Below, you will see a link to the GameStrat website. Click on that link. It'll take you straight to the website. Just Play Football is the uh, only diagram tool that I use. All right, so it's digital software to take your program to the next level. It's the only software I use to draw plays. If I'm web doing any webinars, speaking at clinics, that's always going to be the software I use to draw up plays to make uh, my presentations for webinars or clinics. All right, the Difference USA, which is the ultimate striking machine. You can get thousands of reps working on hand placement. Elbows in, thumbs up, how to strike using your hips, leverage. It right, comes with different spring adjustments that make it harder to uh, leverage the, the, the pad in All right, so that uh, your kids, as they get stronger or your kids are younger, you can change the, pin, the spring out, make it easier All right, to press the pad in. But you get thousands of reps with uh, proper hand placement, proper elbows, where to strike, how to strike, hip leverage, how to do all those things. You don't need a partner. You don't need anybody holding a bag, holding a medicine ball. So it's a cheap and easy way, attaches right to your weight room attachments, or you can put it outside on some of your field equipment, or you can dig uh, two by fours into cement, drop them down, put them in the ground, put it right on that, uh, on that post right there, and you'll be good to go. All right, so make sure you check out uh, Difference USA. Defensive Coordinator 1, in-game app that allows you to make critical in-game adjustments based on live in-game data. you got somebody up in the booth with the app, they're charting every play. They're charting what the offense is actually running. You're building templates every week on the teams that you're playing against. You're building scouting templates and putting them together so that when you go into the game, you have formations ready, you have tendencies, you have all the things that you want. Game starts. They start running plays. Now you know exactly what they're running, where they're running it, what their tendencies are on first down. Was it different than you thought? What calls did you make? Is their personnel different than what you thought? What calls did you make that were good versus two back, but they weren't good versus one back? What did you make versus one back that... Maybe it was really good, and then all of a sudden, the two back got you in trouble. You're looking at pressures. You run a pressure that's really good for you, and then the next time you run it, you get gashed. You don't go back to it. Things like that that make you, as, an, as a defensive coordinator, help you kind of stay on track to say, hey, that wasn't a bad call or a bad pressure. It's just not very good to empty your three by one. All right, so it kind of helps you understand how to use that live in game data to make those critical in game adjustments. All right, and as always, Dome Hats. All right, uh, official sponsor of uh, Play Fast Football and the Play Fast Football Clinic coming up in January. All right, Dome Hats is a local company here in Northeast Florida, but they do a lot of work around the country. They have a, uh, a sweet online custom hat builder where you can go online and generate your own hat, different styles of hats. You use it, you go on, you, you, do, the, you, know, you do the bill, you do the, the under part of the bill, you do the front part, the back part, all the different panels, the eyelets. You can make them all different colors. You give them your... Uh, PDF logo that you want and they put it on there and you generate and build your own hat and get a chance they'll email back to you what that hat's going to look like I think it's a really really good uh, feature to use online all right so check out Dome Hats they do a lot of great things in Northeast Florida and they're trying to do a lot of great things around the country as well so check out Dome Hats you can reach them at www.domehats all right I'm sorry www.domeheadwear Co. That's www.domeheadwear.co. So check out Dome. All right, so well, we have a lot of problems with, with our guys that I notice, especially our younger kids when we get them, um, and our younger kids that we move up to varsity that have to play with us early. On defense, we have a lot of problems with guys looking at the quarterback and in the backfield. And I'm talking about ends. I'm talking about backers, safeties, a lot of guys that really look where they shouldn't look and it gets them in a lot of trouble. So when you're talking about run fits, for us, we play a 3-3 stack defense. All right, It's been very good to us the last uh, last year and the first three games. This year, it's 
been very good to us against the run for the most part. Um, we've made our run fits real easy, and we've made our reads and our keys real easy. It builds itself into uh, a lot of really neat pressures, but if you watched us play, to be honest with you, we actually don't pressure that much as a 3-3 stack team. We don't have a lot of exotic pressures that we use. Um, we play the 3-3 box a little bit more static than most people do, probably more um, like Villanova was a couple of years ago and maybe more uh, like some of the college teams are playing their 3-3 stack stuff. So it's a positionless defense. We have a lot of hybrid uh, players in the game, hybrid linebackers, safety types, and um, it's allowed us to get better athletes on the field. But at the same time, we've kind of simplified our run fits and it's allowed us to play a little bit cleaner, a little bit faster, and a little bit simpler, if that makes sense. But one of the things that we had to clean up was the eye discipline. Where do our guys look, and where do we need them to look to fit in runs? So when you're talking about run fits, you're talking about guys fitting in certain spots based off of the front you're playing, the coverage you're playing, but most importantly, based off of the run scheme that they are getting from the offense. You don't fit every run the same. You don't fit down blocks the same as you fit reach blocks. You don't fit ISO windows the same as you fit closed windows that you got to go over the top of. So every block has a little bit different response and therefore will have a little bit different fit. Okay. So one of the things that we noticed right away with our young kids, the problem we have is they all want to look at the quarterback. And I'm talking even our DNs and our nose guards. They want to look right through their key and they want to look at the quarterback. So Something that we did early on that really helped us out on a varsity level, and we're going to start doing it now on a JV level, is a very simple thing that was taught to me 25 years ago to defend option. Do periods, option, option uh, defenses used to do periods to work against the option with no football. So in other words, they wouldn't put a football in. They would defend the option based on responsibility with Nobody knowing where the football went so that everybody fit off of what their responsibility was off of the call made, off of the front of the coverage you were playing, off of the blocking scheme you got, and then you fit. So you fit the veer and you fit the midline and you fit the belly. And you tried to fit all those things simply off of the block recognition and what you saw without a football. Why? Because first option teams, when you start chasing a football around and they mesh, and they put that thing in somebody's stomach and they ride it all the way into the line of scrimmage, you start looking at the football, you start playing things that you shouldn't play. So when I started figuring out, when I started, first thing that I had to do was I had to start coaching my defensive players from behind the offense so I could see what they were really looking at. And then when I did that, just like I'm looking at the camera, like I'm looking at my kids, I can see that defensive end peeking and in a stance looking inside. I could see that linebacker lined up looking inside. So I could tell right away that we didn't have our eyes where they were. So when you ask somebody what their key did, they can't tell you what their key did. They can't fit the run because they can't see what their key did because they weren't looking at it. So one of the first things we did is we went to inside run periods and we eliminated <clears throat> the quarterback position. And we worked on inside runs and all different theories of inside runs. So, you know, we would work on, on zone read stuff. All right, and we would work on how we would fit zone read with the lineman blocking zone read, the stiffer blocking his assignment for zone read, tailback running zone read, but there's no football. You don't know where the ball is. You just got to fit based off the blocking scheme. All right, so we'd start off and we'd do it that way. And we'd come back and we'd go to maybe like a zone lock theory and we'd base block this end and we'd zone this up and then we'd ISO that backer. All right, and we'd have our guys fit that. And then we'd come back and... <clears throat> Maybe run a power play to where we come back and now we have a down block to the mic and we'd have a double here working back to the ram and we'd have a scoop hinge here with a pulling wrap on that linebacker and a kick by that fullback and we'd work that scheme. And what we do is we'd work those schemes over and over again and the first thing the kids wanted to know is, Coach, who's got the ball? How come you don't have a cue in there? Well, because if you fit the run based on the blocks that you see, and based on the stimulus that you get, and you go where you belong in the run fit, we'll know that the run's taken care of. We don't need to know who's got the ball. We don't care who's got the ball. We'll figure that out eventually, okay? What we care about is based on the stimulus that you're getting, 
All right, and based on the response that you're getting from the offense and the front that we're playing, how do we fit that run versus that blocking scheme? Don't worry about where the ball carrier is. If everybody fits, we'll be fine. So we started doing that with our varsity guys, all right? And we've had a lot of success defending runs. We don't do it every day. We don't do it all the time. But when I feel like we are peaking again, and I feel like we're getting into trouble because we're chasing ghosts, trying to make plays, I'll go back to that. Now, we did incorporate it, all right? And this week, we're going to do it even more. Obviously, at the JV level, we can't play anywhere near, at least us, okay? We can't play anywhere near the complexity of the things that we play on the varsity level. So we play a lot of five-man pressures, six-man pressures, and then some simple three-deep stuff on a JV level. So what happens to us is when we run some of our five-man pressures, because we can't get exotic with the coverages behind it, we end up playing a lot of old-fashioned, bare front man free type stuff, right? So what happens is, okay, our guys don't understand, and I just did this video a couple days ago on, on, on how to fit man-to-man -man schemes, but here's what we found out. Two things. Our guys didn't know how to line up to fit where the running backs were. So if you had a set where you had both running backs in like this near stack set over here, your backside man player, and this is from the other video just to piggyback, your backside man player being over here doesn't really do you a lot of good. Okay? So... First thing we had to talk about is how to get our guys into a position so that they can fit runs properly, all right? Then what we found out after uh, getting our ass kicked this previous Thursday night in a JV game, what we found out was not only do they not really know how to play man with proper leverage and where to line up, but we found out that they all look at this guy back here. So they all stare at that, right? So you got to know when you're playing, all right, bare front stuff or you're playing three techniques, double eagle type stuff, you got to know that you're going to get simple leverage down block schemes, all right? You're going to get simple leverage down block schemes with a kick out and you're going to get pullers on power, okay? Well, here's what happens. When these guys peek at the quarterback, when they peek at the quarterback, they're late to fit off of their man, and it simply becomes a numbers deal to where when this front side player peeks at the quarterback, he doesn't see that his edge blitzer is being blocked by the fullback. So he sits and he waits right here. By that time, the pulling guard comes around, and by that time, the pulling guard gets up on him, okay? And then when, it goes, when it's time to fit the pulling guard, because he's late, he fits it inside here, and the ball bounces to nobody, and the backside guy that stares at the quarterback can't get over the top of that because he's not looking at the running back. He's staring at the quarterback, so he sits there. And what it looks like on film a lot of times is you'll see these guys, they just sit and they kind of just bounce and sometimes almost backpedal. Whereas if they were fitting man schemes properly with their eyes where they belong, if I understood that this was my player man-to-man, -man, if I attacked him when he attacked that blocker and I fit right there, that guard wouldn't have a chance to leverage me on the power play. Now, he may block me or kick me out, but what's going to happen is he's now going to, the, the ball should go back, all right, to that right safety there. Okay, because on the back side, you're going to get a hinge scheme. So either you're going to block back or they're going to hinge. So your back side, you're not really going to get home with that outside blitzer there. He's more of a guy there for bootlegs or quarterback runs or... or drastic cutbacks, but he's not going to make a play. So on the front side now, what you got to realize it now comes down to one, two, three, four, five. It's really only six left in the box, not seven. All right, so they have, if you take the hinge block away from it, they possibly have five to six blockers. we got to get an extra hat somehow. So if we can force them to hinge the backside, all right, or if they just straight down block it like I'm showing you here, these straight down blocks here, if the center's got to go back, they cannot get to both of those plays. It's physically impossible numbers. It's seven on six in the box. They're not reading anybody. The backside hinge isn't going to help them get to those. So the only way they can get to them is if they can hinge the three and these two can double to him. That's the only way they can equate the numbers. 
if their center has to block back at all here to help the four eye or the three technique, they'll never get to those two players. So the problem is when those two players don't have proper eye discipline, okay, when they don't have proper eye discipline, they don't see that the man that they're playing has kicked out the edge blitzer, and they don't go and attack that window right now because they're all staring at the cue, and the cue is meshing and doing all kind of other fancy stuff, so they all sit there frozen because they don't know where the ball's going because they're guessing. By that time, if they do get any double teams coming to them, by that time, by the time they've guessed where the ball is, these linemen are all in their lap. Okay? So, but I went back and I told our coaches after that game, I said, hey, you know what we got to do? we got to go back and do simple drills. If you're going to play a bunch of Bayer 1 free, you're going to play a bunch of man free, okay? you got to do a bunch of different drills where you block different runs with two backs in the backfield, two backs that are split, two backs that are stacked, a, a back in the pistol and another back there, all right? However you want to do it, <clears throat> you've got to do drills where you take the candy that they want to look at out of the drill. So you've got to take this thing out of the drill. So here's a simple way that you can do it. Because you want your defensive line to still have a get-off and you want the center to snap a ball, what you do is you get yourself two Nerf footballs, okay? Get yourself two Nerf footballs so you can keep the drill moving. You don't put anybody behind the center. You let him snap a Nerf ball, all right? And if you want, put a player about 10 yards back here or, or a manager back here to retrieve the Nerf ball, all right? Why a Nerf ball? Just in case there's anybody standing around back there, they don't get crushed with a snap all the time. We chose to use a Nerf ball, all right, so that if anybody was around, nobody would get hurt because we knew the snaps were just going to be flying back with nobody catching them, right? We wanted them. We wanted the ball being snapped in the shotgun with nobody catching it, okay? Here's why. We wanted our guys to understand that you don't need to look at the quarterback to make plays. You need to figure out where the ball is going to go based on a blocking scheme, all right? The other reason we used the Nerf ball is because we didn't want our kids, when we originally started doing a drill, when we snapped a real football back here, we had kids that chased it and thought it was actually a fumble. They didn't realize that we didn't even have a quarterback in the drill until we fully explained to them why we were doing the drill. They just ran like it was a fumble. So we put a Nerf ball in to say, hey guys, this is a Nerf ball, not a real football. So obviously we don't care about the Nerf ball. It's not a fumble. We're not snapping it to anybody. There's no quarterback in the drill because I want you guys to focus on playing your keys in front of you. So I want, all right, this end and this anchor, I want them playing off the block of the guard. Well, when I put a cue back there, sometimes they peek through the guard to the cue and they don't see what the guard does. If I take the cue out, now they have to focus their eyes on their guard. And I want these blitzers coming off the edge, off the tackle. And I want this nose playing straight through the helmet of the, of the center and then maybe playing behind the blocks of the center. That nose can't peek through the center at the QB when there is no QB. These guys are playing man. If we're playing man here and man here, or if we're bracketing, either way we're doing it. You have no excuse of anywhere else to look because there's not a quarterback back there. All right? Then when we go to base run fits, like we did with the varsity, when we go to base run fits, we tell the JV kids, listen, I don't care that there is, and you'll have to, you'll have to your varsity kids get it quickly. JV kids, you're going to explain to them a million times. They can't fathom that there's nobody back there to catch the snap and there's no quarterback. You'll, do, you'll have to do the drill 10 times before they realize, guys, you're fitting off of the run block in front of you. You're fitting where you react to the block reaction based on the front that we're playing. Yeah, but coach, how do I know where to go? There's no ball. You, don't, you should never look at this thing anyways. That's the point of the drill. So you take that out, and now you make your kids fit the run based on the blocks that they're seeing in front of them. All right? It, it really helped us on a varsity level. Um, and hopefully it really helps us on a JV level. It started as a man deal um, where we were playing man and we were peaking and we couldn't fit. So it started as a man deal where I got tired of it and I said, you know what, get the damn quarterback out of there, snap a Nerf ball, make sure we understand where we belong. Uh, it started years ago as an option drill. So we would, if we were playing zone read teams, okay, we would we'd put a cue back there and we would do it with no football at all. 
All right, the problem with that is now your D-line end up going off sides in the game because you're not working on snap counts. But we would do this drill, and we would work zone read with no football so that our kids couldn't find the ball to peek at it. They had to fit the zone read, whether we were playing it high and, all right, and playing the backer in the big gap, or if we were scrape exchanging, chasing it and playing the backer on the cue. They had to fit that off of no football, just blocks and tracks. So it started as an option drill, then turned into a man drill. Now it's turned into almost a full run fit drill for us to where that's really the only way with our defensive kids on JV and sometimes on varsity, that's really the only way we can do an inside run period because for us, for whatever reason, with the kids that we get and when we get them younger, if we put a ball in the quarterback in the drill, it ruins the whole drill because that's all they're going to look at. So you try to do that drill over and over again, and then when the game comes, you hope that you've instilled it so deep in their mind that when the lights come on and you go to another stadium, they don't freak out and go, well, there's a quarterback in there now. i got to look at him. So it's like anything else that you're doing. You're just drilling it over and over and over again during the week, in the summer, in the offseason. You're drilling it over and over again so that when, all right, the, the, the heat is on in a the game, they don't all of a sudden magically in the game start peeking at where that money is in the backfield because they want highlights. Your read is right in front of you. We've been working on it for months. This is your read. If we go in the stadium on Friday night with 5,000 people, it doesn't, your read doesn't go in there now because there's people in the stands. Your read is still the camera. Make your read. All right? On Friday night, you can't all of a sudden go and look in there because it's a game. So you just got to rep it. You got to work it. It's been really good for us on the varsity level. It's been really good for us getting guys to understand fit based on blocks. Don't fit based on where you think the ball is going. Let the offense tell you where the ball is going. It's been good to us for his option teams. It's been good to us for his quarterback run because we understand, based off the blocks we're seeing, who's taking away the inside part, who's scraping to play the outside part. So it's, it's helped us a bunch. And now, this week, I made our JV coaches start doing it in run fit and man periods, more or less. I made them start doing it so that they understand. Look, take, take the eye candy away. If you can't get them to stop looking at the quarterback, do drills where you don't put a quarterback in. Now they got to find something else to look at. Now, if they start staring at the clouds or at the ground, I don't know what to tell you, but at least they won't stare at the quarterback. So sometimes what you got to get to is you got to think outside the box. So when our guys keep complaining about all they do is look at the quarterback, I say, okay, well, how about we take the quarterback away and give them something different to look at? So it's just an idea. It's not for everybody. I know other people are going to say, nah, they don't like it. They want to get to the ball, get helmets to the ball. We want to make sure that we are getting to the ball the proper way based on the blocks that we're seeing. Then we'll work on helmets to the ball and getting the ball out, ripping, strip, next guy in. Sometimes you got to take baby steps to get where you really want to go. All right, so I appreciate all you guys that subscribe. Appreciate all you guys that watch, that like or don't like the videos or comment. All right, I try and respond to every comment that I get. Interaction is great. It's what makes us all better. Remember that we've got the first Play Fest football clinic coming up January 24th, 25th, 26th, 2020. I already have four or five speakers announced, really great speakers. Uh, it's going to be a great clinic. We've got a social Friday night, got a lunch Saturday. Embassy Suites, if you stay there, has made to order breakfast and a two-hour happy hour every night. I think it's going to check every box for clinics that you want to go to as a high school coach. All right, so go to www.playfastfbclinic.com, www.playfastfbclinic.com. You can register there. All right, you can register early. You can register the uh, at, get your room at the Embassy Suites. If you're a business or a vendor and you want to get a booth to be a vendor at the clinic, you can register there. So make sure you go check out that site. Hope this video helps. Hope you guys are back, all right, to, to winning some games. We're on a two-game win streak now after opening up the first uh, game with a loss. So we're on a back-to-back -back win streak now. So we're playing a little bit better, growing and building off the loss. Hope you guys are winning some games or at least playing some better football. Hope this video uh, helps you guys out. Check you out next time. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. See you next video.